So when I look at Syracuse basketball's non-conference schedule for next season, the first thing that I think of is that this is a great opportunity for the Orange next season. They're going to be playing some of the better teams in the country before they get into ACC competition. And that's a good thing because if you have a really weak non-conference schedule, that could be held against you, even if you're going to blow teams out. So before I get to that, though, let's talk about what the schedule actually is. So they are going to have a game against Albany, but the date hasn't been announced yet for that one. They're going to play Colgate at home on November 12th. Uh, from November 21st to 22nd, they got the Legends Classic. It's neutral site at the Barclays Center. They're going to be playing two of Texas, Texas Tech, and St. Joseph's. So they're going to be playing two of those teams. November 27th, they got Cornell at home. December 3rd, they are at Tennessee for the ACC-SEC Challenge. December 14th, they got Georgetown. They still suck. And December 21st, they got Maryland, which is a neutral site, also at the Barclays Center. And they still need to add, I believe, three more non-conference games to the schedule. But like I said... This is a great opportunity for the Orange. Playing in the Legends Classic, you are going to be playing against one of Texas or Texas Tech. You might even play both. Because if you win that first game, you might have to play the other one. Who knows, right? ESPN has Texas just outside of the top 25 in their rankings. I know it's early. It's super early to do rankings right now. But at the same time, you're starting to see what the rosters are going to shake out like for next season. So even though it's early and games haven't been played yet, the rosters really aren't going to change between now and the start of the season. So Texas is like just outside the top 25. And you got Texas Tech that's inside the top 25. They are number 23 to be exact. They added guys like JT Toppin and Elijah Hawkins. Those are two four-star transfers, both of which I wanted Syracuse to go after. Elijah Hawkins maybe made a little bit more sense, but JT Toppin was the better of the two. And they also retained four of their top seven scorers from last season for a team That was in the NCAA tournament last year as a sixth seed, I believe. So Texas Tech, very strong. And Texas is not a slouch either. So they're going to be playing two of those. A great opportunity for Syracuse to kind of get a signature win before ACC play starts. Now at Tennessee, that's going to be really challenging. They're number 13 right now when I looked in the ESPN Top 25, number 13. Hopefully the result is better than what it was last season. I know you guys might push back on that and say, well, they kept it close last year against Tennessee. Here's what I'll say. I agree. Syracuse fought hard against Tennessee last season. And even though they lost by 17 points, it was certainly a lot closer than 17 points. Syracuse built a big lead early on. Tennessee chipped away at it. They had the lead for the majority of the second half, and Tennessee made a run to make it a 17-point game in the end. At the same time, even if you keep it close for 35, 36 minutes of a game, it doesn't matter if the final score is by 17 points. That's not how the net rankings are calculated. A lot of it is due to margin of defeat, margin of victory, So they're just going to look at the 17 points that you lost by. Not saying that I agree with the system entirely, but that's how the system is, and you have to work your way around it. Everyone is dealing with the same advantages and disadvantages of the system. You have to separate these teams somehow, especially the ones that are on the bubble. They like to use the net. Margin of defeat is counted upon it. I don't know what to tell you. So even though it was close, they ended up losing by 17. Hopefully it's a little bit closer this season. But it being a true road game and not a neutral site like it was last year, they played in the Maui Invitational. Yeah, it's going to be tough. But it's a great opportunity. Great opportunity for Syracuse to get a signature road victory. They haven't done that in a very long time. I believe the last time Syracuse won a... Ranked game on the road, 2019 against Virginia. 
I want to say. I think that's when it was. 2019 against Virginia, I think, was the last time Syracuse won a, not a non-conference, won a top 25 game on the road. So Tennessee looking like that'll be their next opportunity to get one. And by the way, the reason why these teams are allowed to play in back-to-back seasons is because they played in the Maui Invitational last year. So this is now the ACC-SEC Challenge. It's a tough draw that Syracuse got Tennessee, but that's why they're playing in back-to-back years because they're two separate challenges, tournaments, whatever you want to call them. So we're playing Tennessee again. They lost Dalton Connect, who is one of the best players in the country last season. They also lost their center, Jonas Adu, but at the same time, they reloaded. They got Chaz Lanier, one of the 10 best transfers in the portal this past offseason. They also got Darlin Stone Dubar, a player that Syracuse had reached out to, who I really wanted them to get. They got Darlin Stone Dubar. So Tennessee should still be really good next season. Great opportunity for Syracuse to get a signature road victory, perhaps. They also got Georgetown on there. They still suck. They added in a guy like Malik Mack, and I think they'll be better than what they've been the past few seasons. So. Won't sleep on Georgetown, but at the same time, it's not the most difficult game, I think, on the schedule. They also have Maryland. They were left just outside of the top 25, just like Texas. That's a neutral site game. They added in a guy like Jacoby Gillespie from Belmont. They also got a five-star center prospect in Derek Queen. He's ranked, I believe, two spots lower than Donnie Freeman in the ESPN 100. And he's a center, so it should be a battle between those two. Maryland's not a slouch. Maryland, Georgetown, no slouches. You might have to play Texas and or Texas Tech. Tennessee on the road. This is a great opportunity for Syracuse basketball. I don't think it's an overwhelming non-conference schedule, but it's certainly not easy. So I don't see many people criticizing it for being not good. I don't see it, right? I don't I don't think people are going to be like, well, Syracuse had an easy non-con when they're trying to decide who gets in and who gets out for the NCAA tournament. If Syracuse can win, I believe, two of two games out of there, you, if you can beat one of Texas or Texas Tech, that'd be great. If you can keep it close against Tennessee, that would be great. You beat Georgetown, you beat Maryland. I think that would be a successful non-conference part right there. Now, coming up, there's still some more that needs to be added to the non-conference schedule, and I think Syracuse needs to add some cupcakes to it. 